Hey there, folks. Welcome to part 11, my refight of Brandywine using GMT's Great Battles of the American Revolution. And we're about to pick up on turn 7. And for the Patriots, they're very fortunate in this case. Uh, they went last in turn 6. Uh, however, in turn 7, they get to go first. And that's going to pay off, I think, for them. It's going to give them time to uh, get themselves in position and uh, in preparation for Howe's forces that will be arriving up in this direction, if you remember. Howe is coming on this side of the board, up that road, right next to those initial forces. We'll take a look at them in a minute. But uh, one thing I plan to do this turn, if we look down here, where Green's forces are assembled, uh, he's currently doing a fighting withdrawal, uh, getting across after a kind of a petered out counterattack, crossing the to the western side of the Brandywine, uh, I've decided to pull him back and I could make better use of his troops that way. He did take a considerable number of troops with him. Um, so we're in the midst of doing a fighting withdrawal here. I think I can get all of his units safely across to the eastern side of the Brandywine this turn. I think I can. Uh, yeah, this, you can't you have to stop moving when you enter the zone of control of an enemy unit, and that is adjacent to this stack of enemy units. However, uh, zone of control does not extend into woods, so Grant here does not have a zone of control in here. He doesn't have to stop if he moves here, this guy, so he can continue on, get to the ford, and get across. Uh, we'll see how that works out, but that is the goal here. They're giving up the heights. Maxwell and some of his troops have been captured. The position has effectively been taken, even though it's actually vacant at this point. And if Housen is right here, he's about to advance into that position. But that's all for nothing because, you know, the battle isn't going to take place here. It's actually up here uh, at this ford. And this is Chad's ford. And this is their objective, the British. And the Patriots as well. Patriots currently hold it. It's Proctor's uh, battery position. And it's a reinforced, uh, got some earthworks here, uh, position. And Wayne himself is currently in here. He's got a battery of guns and a couple units in there as well. And they want to hold on to this for the remainder of the battle. So the Patriots want to get Green's troops safely across. Uh, and continue holding these two fords. Because <clears throat> I'm sure Gniffhausen is going to be moving forward to try and take those positions. Maybe even cross up here. Although that's going to be uh, desperate fighting for the British, I think. It's not going to be easy if they do just cross through this wooded area with no uh, easy crossing points. There's no fords along this section. There's some secondary fords here. Uh, we'll see. When we get to the British, well, that's when we'll think about what we're going to do. But... Patriots are going to pull their troops off and shore up these defenses. Uh, in addition, we take a look at Sterling's force uh, further to the north of the Brandywine. This is Sterling's position here. He has occupied the Birmingham Manor House, or not the Manor House, the Meeting House. He's got a good defensive force in there. Uh, the Patriots in this turn, I think, are going to get a little bit aggressive. Uh, put some hurt down on these light forces of the British that have already advanced forward along the road here, the Forks Road. Uh, they're going to try and engage some of these initial units and do as much damage as they can uh, to the British, hopefully boosting their army's morale. The Patriots need a boost in their morale. Right now they're at nine uh, in army level, which is in the fatigued zone. The British are in the high morale zone. So i got to work on building that morale up as much as I can. I do want to get aggressive here, uh, take advantage of some local advantages, and engage these troops and see what happens. And also, I want to engage Howe's initial forces as quickly as possible, as far away from the meeting house as possible. So that's really what I intend to do in this turn. So we'll probably start seeing some fighting up in this area in this turn. And while we're talking about army morale, let's take a quick look at that. Uh, this is the Americans' current position. As I said, it's number nine on the morale check, morale track for the armies. That's not good, and this is mostly the result of a lot of failed combats uh, on Green's behalf. 
Uh, the British, on the other hand, went up. They are up here at 21. They're maxed. And as a reminder, being in the fatigue zone means that all Patriot units, their morale is negative one. So whatever's printed for their morale on their counter, it suffers an additional negative one penalty. So that's not good. In addition, they have no initiative modifier. Normally, when you're high morale, you get a plus one to gain initiative. So the Patriots are quite fortunate uh, to gain initiative this turn. It was some good rolls there. In the, the British, if you remember, used uh, a momentum chip to get a plus two on their initiative on top of their already bonus of plus ones. They had plus three. They failed that roll. So that was interesting. Very fortunate for the Patriots. They do need a turn of events here soon. Uh, otherwise, their army could just give up the field and leave the battle uh, because of this. And the British would have a substantial victory. But both armies are going for a decisive victory. British going for uh, Dewarton or the road to Philadelphia. And the Patriots attempting to hold both Proctor's Battery position and the Birmingham Meeting House. Uh, further up there. You can see the meeting house is right there. So this position and that position the Patriots are after, uh, as well as the British. So let's get into this. I'm going to get into the movement and we're going to do some rallies as well. As you can see here, there is a Patriot unit to rally here. Uh, that'll, If I rally them successfully, that'll boost the morale of the army. And there's one more unit under here that I have to attempt to rally. Uh, but of course, movement is first, and disrupted units have a maximum of one hex movement. So we'll see how far I get with these guys, and I do want to pull back these guys from this position and set up my defenses. So let's get into that, and I'll show you the results. All right, so there we go. Uh, I did the movements, and I did the rallies. And unfortunately, the Patriots cannot rally this unit. I had a better chance than the second unit, which was behind it, but it failed. And I think it rolled a three. Uh, it had a plus one, minus one. So, yeah, it needs to roll above a four. So it's still disrupted. This little stack here, he's in there somewhere. But the unit behind him in this hex here did rally. That was one of these two here. I think it was this one. The old 11th? I'm not sure. But it did rally. So that did help the morale. The armor morale of the Patriots went up to 10. It went went up plus one basically and as far as movement is concerned as you can see I managed to get all those troops across to the eastern side of the Brandywine all as well uh, Green is still engaged with a strength six unit uh, lined up with Grant at the Ford in this case so there's going to be fighting on the Ford uh, the Patriots also reinforced this position to Green's left on the flank there so there'll be a little bit of extra uh, fighting capability. Unfortunately, it's not advantageous to be fighting across this Brandywine Creek, but we do have the fort. So we'll see what comes out of this when we get to close combat. We'll talk about that. Uh, what else went on? Of course, there was some more shifting from Washington's position. Uh, he hasn't actually moved, but I did throw forward the North Carolina Regiment, which don't have the best morale to negative one. Uh, but it is a strength 5 unit, and I'm sending it on its way to Dilworthen, uh, basically to support Sterling. I'm really getting concerned about Sterling's force, and uh, let's take a look at Sterling, in fact. And there he is. And after moving these guys forward, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of troops here. Howe has a huge force coming onto the board in the next turn. Well, not the next turn, this turn. This is turn seven. Uh, but it's a considerable amount of troops which are going to be coming on this road area here. Uh, whether he brings them all on or not, we'll see. But uh, getting a little concerned. It's not a lot of troops under Sterling. But you know what? All we have to do is hold on to Birmingham Heights and hopefully not take a lot of casualties. And we'll see. I'm trying to engage... Uh, the initial forces right off the bat because these are the easier troops to deal with we got some rifle arm jaegers in here some dragoons which i've matched with my own dragoons we'll see if they withdraw or not but this stack here which is some light troops including rifles is being engaged by my infantry and rifles you'll see that 
And one thing I should point out, I did make a mistake with the Patriots. They had a, at least a couple rifle-armed units, and I forgot to mark them with this counter here, the first fire marker. So basically, what I'm doing is, to balance that slightly, uh, I'm not giving these rifle units for the Germans a first fire marker. Which, if you remember, once they're marked with that, which is always at the start of a battle, uh, they gain a plus one DRM when they shoot for the first time. So these Jaegers have been practicing their shots. Their muskets are a little fouled. They're going into the battle without their first fire markers. That's just to balance it out, because uh, I made that mistake with the Patriots. So hopefully that'll kind of make up for that. We are engaging up here, so we're going to see the results of that when we get to... Uh, uh, the rifle fire segment of the turn. So moving on to the artillery fire, defensive artillery for the British. There will be some shooting here. We'll just take some shots at these guys. There's really nothing I could do with them at this point. Uh, there's no other British artillery in range, I don't believe. No. So there won't be any, there won't be much with the British defensive fire this turn. As far as rifles, um, really nothing except here at this location. Essentially, the only fighting going on outside of Sterling, up there to the north, uh, is right here. And there will be some rifle shooting, and we'll see what happens with the close combat as we got Green and Grant uh, fighting for control of that Ford. And that's about it. So let's get into the defensive artillery fire and the rifle fire, and I'll show you the results of that. All right, resolve the defensive fire for the British. Totally ineffective. I did take some shots over here with this Strength 3 battery on the position here at Proctor's uh, battery. Uh, and also here did some counter battery fire. All ineffective, unfortunately. Uh, can't expect too much from your guns. Uh, as far as rifle fire was concerned, at least down here, it was also ineffective. The only shooting was up here. Uh, Doyle's regiment of rifles fired across the Brandywine at uh, this position here where Grant is uh, and was ineffective. So that was that as far as this area is concerned. And as far as Sterling's position with some rifle fire as well, all ineffective. Americans shot in this position here, at least one of the units was targeted, ineffective. Uh, even with the bonus of first fire, ineffective. Uh, both German Jaeger units did fire on this bigger unit here of Patriots. It was ineffective, and unfortunately it was ineffective because of a one-point difference. They could not score the hit number. I believe it was a six. I'll have to double-check it, but they only had a five. Something like that. It was one point away from getting a hit. And if you remember, this is, these are the units I took away that bonus of first fire. If they had that, they would have hit this unit. So, But again, it evens out, doesn't it? So, no effect up here. All right, resolve the close combats, and pretty much a standstill right here. Uh, Green had to make the attack across the ford. I only took a minus one penalty. Uh, I didn't include the rifles in the combat, because that would have been an additional minus one, but there is another unit in here who did attack. And uh, so I'm not... So I've got a nice mix of guys attacking across the Ford and non-Ford. So the penalty really wasn't as bad. But regardless, uh, tactics were used. Uh, Green also has a plus one in the combat. His combat leadership. And tactics were, I think both sides picked a commit reserve. And that was it. So there was nothing else to go going on here. It was undecided. Uh, however... The result went, did actually go against the Patriots, I should correct myself. This unit was reduced. This was the old red trouser unit we were talking about before. Second Pennsylvania Brigade it went from strength 6 down to strength 3. And I believe their morale dropped as well. Yeah, it was 0. Now it's negative 1 uh, for its reduced side. Can't use my tweezers here. It's a lot more clumsier. That said, these counters being bigger and bigger hexes, it's not as difficult to pick up these uh, counters as you think with your fingers. So, yeah, so that was that combat. They're still holding at the Ford. No result. And, yeah, no units withdrew or retreated. But that did go against the Patriots, unfortunately. And taking a 
look up here at the combats where Sterling is uh, involved. This was interesting. Uh, looking at this combat against these lead Jaeger units, which are right here. Uh, let's see. This unit from this stack over here. This, un this unit on the top here. Uh, the cavalry did not fight here. They're fighting in a separate combat against these Dragoons, so they could do that. Uh, but the 7th Virginia, the Strength 5, did attack this hex, as well as this unit, a New Jersey unit, a Strength 5, also attacked this unit. The rifles didn't. I kept them out of the combat. The rifles, it's an option to attack. They're not forced to. I kept them out because they're penalized with a negative 1, I believe, if they're involved in the combat. So I don't want them in this combat. And this hex, of course, was occupied by these two units of Jaegers. Uh, basically had to defend themselves. And uh, the lead unit was this plus two unit. Anyway, the combat result was overwhelming. I think there was... Uh, I'm not sure if there was a modifier or not. I think it was no modifier. But it was 4-1 to one odds. The Patriots won. Uh, with a roll of a nine. The result was a nine. And they captured one of these Jaeger units. And they chose this one, which is a plus two. And what's going to happen here is because they captured this and it's a plus two, the British are going to lose their last momentum shit as well. If you remember, they still have one momentum left. They're going to lose that. So not only is this unit captured, which is going to have a negative effect on the army's morale for the British, the British are also going to lose a momentum. Uh, this unit had to pass a morale check, uh, which they did, and the result of that was they retreat one hex. So they're going to fall back into this hex right here, where the chasseurs and MU sets are located. They're not overstacking by doing so. I think they're at five total strength points in there. And which the lead unit involved in this combat will advance into this hex, and I believe it was this one. So, yeah, he is now in that position there. This unit of Jaegers was captured. The British also lost momentum. Their army morale is going to go down. And I believe the Patriots will also gain a victory point. If I look real quick, uh, yeah, they're going to gain a whole victory point for that. So they're going to be up to two and a half victory points. And that alone is going to give them a boost in morale of plus one. Uh... Yeah, so that's the combat so far. Now we're going to resolve the combats here and here. Uh, these are going to be this is going to be a cavalry battle, and I'm not sure if the British are going to withdraw, but I'll show you the results of that and what I decide to do. And that's that. I fought these remaining two combats. It was basically this uh, Queen's Light Dragoons, the first Queen's Light Dragoons, going against. Uh, I forget what unit that was, but he can tell it's gone. It basically took a step loss. It was eliminated because it was a one-step unit. There was nothing on its reverse side. It was eliminated. So the Queen's Dragoons were successful. I believe it was one-to-one -one odds, but it had a negative two modifier to the die roll. Uh, the Patriots rolled horrible. I think they rolled a one or something, but it, it was bad. And... This combat up here was also fought. You can see the results of that. There was two Patriot... Uh, horse units up here. One was a one was a eliminated. It got a, a step reduction, and it's a one step unit. So like here, it too was eliminated, uh, and this unit failed its morale and it fell back. So yeah, that was the situation. The Patriots took a big hit to their army morale. They're dropped down to eight currently. The British are at twenty one. So, yeah, this little attack here with the cavalry was, was horrible. It went bad. I should have looked at that a little bit closer, I think. I wasn't paying attention. There was some uh, penalties there. It was not in the favor of the Patriots. I think this combat up here had negative 2 to it under a 2 to 1 odds in favor of the Patriots, but a negative 2. And this one was a total of a negative uh, 2 as well. And it was 1 to 1 odds. Unless I screwed up there with the numbers. I think that's what it was. So, uh, Fortunately, they still hold this position with the 7th Virginia Infantry. And this cavalry unit fell back. It survived. And, yeah, so that was the combat fighting up here. 
limited success for the Patriots. They gained some success here, but lost in the cavalry fighting over there in the fields. And yeah, let's take a look at the battlefield so far. So there we are, limited success for the Patriots. I think the best thing they achieved this turn was just getting their troops back across the Brandywine on the east side. Uh, all the other combats were pretty much a standstill. Only Sterling up top here, only Sterling's infantry up there um, had some success at capturing a, a Jaeger unit and forcing the other Jaeger unit to fall back. So there was some success there. Uh, the morale level, as you can see, uh, the Patriots are down to 8. Uh, once they drop below 6, in the, the 1 to 5 zone, they are in the reds. They're in the wavering zone, and that's not good. Uh, that'll be a minus 2 to units morale, and their initiative will suffer a minus 2. So that's not good for the Patriots. Uh, all right, folks, this is going to complete uh, the American segment of turn 7. The next turn is going to be the British, and they're going to be bringing on Howe's main force. Of course, there they are. Uh, basically, these two rows. Uh, we're going to flip this to the British side of turn 7. And all these guys, we got them stacked in their nationality and troop types uh, groups here. Uh, all these guys and all these guys will be entering the battlefield. Of course, we have Howe and Cornwallis. Uh, we also have some rifle units, which I've marked. Well, no, there's nothing there. Those are my first fire markers to remind me so I don't forget to place them. Uh, I believe there's some rifles. Yeah, right here we got some Jaegers. And I think that's it. Uh, the rest are just German units. Uh, some Grenadiers cannon back here. we got two batteries of German, ba uh, German batteries and three for the British. These are two large stacks of British infantry and there's three units of Germans including some rifles and of course Cornwallis and Howe. They will be arriving on the battlefield in the next turn and that's what we're going to look at with the next episode to this uh, battle so far. We're going to bring on the British and so yeah that's what we got to look forward to next folks. And, of course, those troops will be coming on this point here at D. Uh, this is their starting hex. They'll move onto the battlefield from this hex. Uh, some high ground here, descending into this little valley area in front of the Birmingham Hill and, of course, the Birmingham Meeting House. Uh, I'm not going to waste much time with this when I do bring them on. I'll, I'll get into that in the next video. But anticipate seeing Howe's forces come on in force. Uh, they will spread out somewhat, but there's going to be a strong push up this road. Uh, get these patriots out of the way and, and commit some troops to attacking the Birmingham Meeting House because we definitely want to deny the Americans that strong point. Uh, that'll take away from them any chance of a decisive victory. and I'm almost positive they're not going to come away with a substantial or a marginal victory either. So if we deny the patriots this position... Uh, the battle's pretty much in the bag. Uh, yeah. And we'll see what happens at that point. And I'm not too worried about these initial forces. It's it actually turned out kind of successful uh, against the Patriot Horse units. But we'll see. We're going to get into that in the next episode. So there you go, folks. That is turn 7 for the Patriots complete. And up top there you can see all the eliminated. That's these guys. Uh... Two units eliminated. That's it in the whole battle so far. This whole group here are the captured units. A lot of Patriots, including Maxwell, have been captured in this fight so far. And of course that green unit there, you can just see him. That's that Jaeger unit up fighting with Sterling that was captured. That's about it. Again, Army Morale 21 for British, 8 for the Patriots. And there it is. That's the battle, and how is about to arrive. Everything is kind of stable for the British at the moment. Uh, nothing to be too concerned with. I think the British are going to reinforce this position where Grant is located at uh, the Ford, and they're going to push forward now that Howe is definitely arriving on the battlefield. And, of course, we're going to see Howe arrive with his forces and fanning out to take on Sterling and uh, deny him any chance at a decisive victory by taking the Birmingham Meeting House. So I hope you enjoyed, folks. Like, share, subscribe, all that.
Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to get into some uh, maneuvering and other shenanigans put on by the British. We'll see what they do. And we're going to get into it. So I hope you enjoyed, folks. Leave me some comments. And as always, folks, remember, hang in there. It's only going to get better. Take care.